Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you tuning in once again. So, we're doing a video 1.5. I told you on this one I was going to do two videos, but I had to repaint the body and I may have to hit it one more time. I had some dirt in the first time around, um, so I wanted to kind of clean that up a little bit because I had some nasty spots in the trunk. Went through, resanded it, and I hit it again real quick. And I don't know what the deal was, but it, it like fish eyed really bad back there. So, that just tells you um, before you start painting these things, make sure you're clean yes the car needs to be clean and everything else but i just pulled a late night from work uh, i didn't go home to like 8 30 and i work automotive so i don't know if i had grease on my face i rubbed my face one time and i got i may have touched the car after touching my face or whatnot and i don't know because it it just yeah no big deal whatever it is what it is so i give it just a quick shot and i thought oh, you kidding me so i went through wet sand again and i had to take it down quite a ways um I'll show you here in just a second so um another thing uh i had a video on wet sanding i was i was wet sanding it and i'm showing you guys but i have a different phone that i use for my camera i got a new phone and i don't know the picture is a little too high defy so i did the mustang um intro video and i don't like it so i'm going back to my old phone um or i need to just turn this one down either way it doesn't matter it's all good so anyways I don't know what to do with that other video that I was West sending it. I can't find out if I deleted or what, but it's not there. But anyways, so when you're wet sanding, uh, I was showing, I was going to show you guys in the video that I keep these microfiber towels handy. So as I'm going, I'll, I'll wipe it off again and, and look at it. And, and that way you can see if the spots still there or not. Because if you just keep wet sanding, there's water all over it. You can't really see if it's like good to go or not. So I like to take and wet sand it down and then. I'll dry it and I'll just do little sections at a time and I'll just keep moving myself all the way around the car. And I get done, it'll be all dried and I'll look at it and I'll kind of examine it nice. And I go, oh, there's a spot, there's a spot. And I go back and, you know, touch it up. So it's no big deal. It's just a little bit of patience and the better the wet sand, the better the quality of the paint's gonna look in the end if you want that nice, nice look. So like I say, uh, re wet sanded that and painted it. Show you in the video here quick and go from there. So. Further ado, let's take you over to the bench and let's get started. All right, guys. So we are getting ready to mix the paint for this. So I did a little more sanding on the Coronet. So I'll take a show here. So I didn't realize I had a really bad, uh, yeah, this nasty spot right here. So I had to sand that down quite a bit. So when you guys are sanding these things, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, just because you see a spot, like say that's a dirt spot, you can't just like sand that down. You actually got to feather this out quite a ways because I had the spot was here. So I needed to sand this down. Um, it's actually quite a ways across here, I should say. Um, but I had to sand this part of it down to lower it down so it's not just like a bump, you know what I mean? So when you're sanding this stuff, you have to, you have to feather this out way out here just so you don't have a low spot. So this is kind of just a real gradual, and when you run your finger across it, you should not even feel that at all. Because if you do, you will see it in the paint. So, like I said, this is all wet sanded down. And like I say, when I do wet sand this stuff, I just take small pieces of sandpaper. And I like to just take and just cut them with scissors. I just take a sheet. And this is automotive sandpaper. I just do the regular stuff. I don't usually use the modeling sandpaper a lot of times. Because bang for the buck, I can get like five times the use out of this than I can those little squares. So I'll just take my scissors cut it up just cut it in little pieces and that way it makes it more manageable and then when I need to I'll fold it you know like take the piece and just fold it on a sharp corner and just take your time and go across the edges and whatnot uh, that works pretty good so we're gonna try this again so I may have to do is might have to do a couple applications on this just to fill this back in the green again so I may just give it a quick light paint and I'll see how it covers um, other than that, or my other thought was just to mask this off where I hit this body line and shoot this a couple times just to get it built back up to the normal green and then maybe give it a little wet sand and then hit it again overall one more time. Um, but I'll, I'm going to paint it first to see how it goes. So what we're going to do is get this mixed up and I'm going to show you guys exactly how we're mixing this. So we are using our, um, green for the interior. I ended up painting the seats green. I thought, you know what? 
I was debating on a couple different colors, and I was telling you before there was a pad on the on the dash that was green. I saw online, so I actually painted this part of the dash with a green pad. So once that cures a little bit, I just brush painted it with the metallic um, mist green metallic from MCW. So I just took brush and just kind of light brushed it. So once that dries, we're going to take a little bit of uh, flat and go across it so it's not such a sheen on it. You really can't tell once the dash is tipped down, but just in case. So all the seats are painted. Uh, they are currently in the Susie Bake oven drying. And once those completely dry, I'm going to take some dull coat and hit them uh, just so they're not glossy. Um, just to tone them down just a little bit. So we'll see how those look. Other than that, we're going to put our avocado green back on the car again. And we'll see how it sprays out. So I've been having a few issues with some dirt in my paint booth. I just changed the, cleaned the filters and everything up. And it seems like every time I do that, I get a little bit of dirt. You'd think it'd be the opposite way, but it actually works better when I leave it dirty. So, yeah, let's go figure. Okay, I'll get this mixed up. So we're going to take our thinner. And like I say, I'm using um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. So I got some new cups. These are nice, these little medicine cups. And they have a really nice increment on there. So it's a little easier to follow. And like I said, we're going to put our avocado green. I have some MCW hardener. And we'll go from there. So another thing, guys, if you guys are using these little pipettes, so what I like to do is I'll save like the thinner one. I usually save this one. Uh, the hardener one I won't um, because you'll get hardener, like almost like chips in there once it starts to cure on its own. Um, but the thinner, I'll write a little T on there with a Sharpie. That way when I lay it down and I need a little more, I don't accidentally grab the one I just used the hardener in because I did that before and I end up ruining a bottle of paint so by accident. So I'm going to do is, there's, these are marked out in milliliters. So we're just going to go to 5 milliliters because I'm going to plan on just doing an overall paint on it. So we'll go to 5 and then I'll do 5 and thinner. So we're going to paint in here. So we're about at the 5 mark. We'll do the same with thinner. And we'll take our hardener. So these little pipettes I get are marked out in milliliters. So this one goes to 3.0 milliliter. So what I'm going to do is go to the 1 mark, which is about here. A little bit more in there. And this here I usually throw away. That way I don't use it in anything else. And we can put our concoction together here. Put some lids back on. And being I use this for thinner, I will reuse that one. I'll take and mix this up. That's why I say that's where a little badger mixer would come in really nice. That's on my, it's on my next list. It's gonna happen. So I always like to do is just try just a little bit on the sides. It seems like it covers good without washing completely down. I figure I'm pretty good to go. This is really heavy on metallic, so I want to make sure it's mixed really good. So this will give me about, in the airbrush, a little over a cup in my airbrush with this amount. Alright, we'll take you over and throw this in the gun. So we're going to be using the Iowata. Uh, this is a HP-C, and we're going to be running about 19 PSI. Um, and that should spray pretty good. So I'll take you over to the booth, and we'll get her going.
Sometimes uh, cleaning looks pretty easy with the airbrush, guys. I just use the Tamiya airbrush cleaner. This stuff works great. I just dump a little bit in. And I keep this old paintbrush that stays in this booth all the time. I'll take this and just swirl this around. Right down inside there and spray it while I'm doing it. And before I get emptied out, I'll go on the end here and let it bubble up to the top of the needle. So, that kind of backwashes a little bit. See how that, now it's kind of dark in there. So I'll dump this out. Run it to a clean. Just dump a little bit more in here. And that's all I need to do. And I'll take this sometimes and go in the front. Make sure that's cleaned out. And that's it. I'll just dump this out. And like I said, the airbrush is the way to go because it's just, and it's nothing to clean it. I mean, that took what? 30 seconds and it's done. So I'll dump out a little extra. I'll just let that cycle through and that's it. Now, maybe every two weeks I'll go through and I'll do a complete clean on the airbrush. Make sure the needle's nice and clean. Other than that, that's all I do and I can change colors, everything. Everybody's cool. Okay, moving on. Okay, so as you've seen that I was airbrushing that, um, I didn't have much body line in the back because I had to sand it so much. So that may need some a little more attention in the back. We'll see what it looks like a little bit after it cures. But the rest of the car, for what I can see, looks really good. So um, those are just things we're going to have to work on here. So uh, why that's in the Susie Bake oven. Um, now when I put those in my dehydrator to cure, I don't put start it right away. So it's actually just sitting in there. I'll leave it sit in there about a half hour uh, to let the the thinner um, kind of calm down and let it settle the paint. And I'll do that before I turn the dehydrator on that way. Because if I turn the dehydrator on now, um, it'll just sit there and just start baking the paint right where it lays versus the thinner doing its job and leveling it out ahead of time. So that's what we're doing. So I painted the seats. Uh, Tony Lancer stopped over today and we were talking. I told him, man, my Falcon turned out so good with those colored seats. Um, I think I'm going to do the green seats in here because I just like the looks of it. So I didn't want to use the same color as the car and I wanted to keep it somewhat um, a little off contrast, but not too far. So this color was pretty close to that and spraying on the black. Uh, I think this is going to look pretty sweet. Now, once this cures, these are still... They're not sticky or nothing, but I can tell they're just a little tacky yet. But I can handle it without leaving fingerprints. Um, like I say, guys, look at this. Like I say, for this MPC kit, they give you these nice guide pieces to line all the stuff up. I mean, how nice is that? So you put that in, see everything lines up nice in there? I mean, you can't go wrong. Simple kit. Very nice. This would be a good beginner kit, you know, for one of those beginner kits, this would be a really good one for that because it, it goes together really nice. So we're just setting this together. So I painted the door panels. So I took the green paint, I masked this off, and I did the top. So when that sits across the top of the car, uh, I think that'll look pretty good. So these are pretty much not getting painted anymore. So we can take these out of here. Just give us an idea what this is going to look like. So, and I also went and made sure I did this backside just in case, uh, you know, some kits are, uh, in case it sits a little higher than the, the body itself. That way you're not going to see any black or anything that's shining through. So these are going to sit like so. I'll give us a nice look. Just kind of mocking this up here. 
nothing's permanent until she glued. Like I said, I want to flat, I want to dull that out a little bit. It's got little guide pins everywhere, so you really can't mess this up. Boy, that goes together nice. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Boy, that goes together nice. You don't even have to glue it. So get the seat in place, and then we get the back seat in there. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, like I said, I'm going to dull this out, and I'm going to go through and paint the seat belts so it'll look nice because I can do a, a nice, uh, kind of like a, probably the semi-gloss black and the model tool on the end. Oh yeah, that looks really nice in there. We can get our dashboard in there. That'll look good. Yep, that looks nice. You got that green piece on the inside there, if you can see that or not. That looked pretty sharp once that's dulled down. Uh, and then on our chrome tree, I have a chrome piece that sets in here. Uh, man, I think that'll look good. So obviously the car is not really that color. Um, so I think that looked pretty sharp. So I did paint the hood. I repainted that. So I painted the hood in satin black. So this is the final product on that. That turned out really nice. That's in uh, Tamiya, uh, the flat or the semi-gloss uh, black. So that is um, all done. So it looks pretty nice. So I'm going to take this and chrome this out here. And I just got to touch the bottom up from where I painted that. So that's where we're at. So like I said, I'm going to let these cure a little bit. I'm going to probably let them bake in the oven for a little bit longer. Um, but I think that that'll look really nice. So I'm going to finish detailing the inside of those panels out a little bit. Um, and like I said, I'm going to flatten these out just a little bit just to give it a, get that high gloss uh, look off there. Now we can put our gauges in, finish that up, and the interior will be done. So other than that, uh, get the rest of the engine and everything set in the chassis, and we get that body dried up, and we should be able to finish it up. So I'm just going to show you that body real quick. I'm going to let it bake for a few minutes. Um, so I'll come back with that, and I'll show you that. And we're going to probably wrap this video up because I'm sure it's running long enough as it is. But I just want to show you a real quick mix on how I do the, my painting with the airbrushing, and then obviously a clean up at the end. Because uh, I know a lot of you guys have questions about that, and it's it's just so simple and quick to do. And, and once you get used to it, you won't go back to rattle cans, I'm telling you. It's just, you can't beat the look of airbrush look. You just, you can't beat it. It's so controlled and precise. Um, I mean, just look at this here. This was just a quick tape job. I just like, took to me a tape, went across that, and I mean, look how nice that looks. Just, you wouldn't be able to get that with a brush or the big can. Big can will be overly heavy done or will bleed through. Um, so airbrush is the way to go. So anything, even these little simple projects like this, airbrush it. Because um, you see how quick it was to clean it? Simple as that. So I did brush that because I tried taping it and there's just too many lines. And I thought, no, that's going to overspray everywhere. And it'll have that nice green metallic sheen on everything. And I don't want that, so... So that's where we went. So, okay, I'm going to pull that body out here in a little bit. I'm going to let it bake for a bit. Uh, and I'll bring back to you and we'll take a quick look at it. And I know for what I can see that trunk literally needs a little more uh, work done to it. So I'll figure out what I'm going to do from there. So we'll be right back. All right, guys. So these are end results. Uh, this dried out pretty good. It's been sitting in the oven for a couple hours. So we are pretty clean on the sides. That looks really good. So this car now has three light coats on it. So that's with this metallic, it filled those door gaps in really nice. Um, and like I say, it, that trunk's going to get a fourth hit because that still doesn't look that good. I'm not very happy to, with that at all. So you can see it kind of filled that body. So I might describe that body line, wet sand that one more time. And I, you know, that was pretty smooth, but whatever I have on there, it actually wrinkled this paint just a little bit on this corner right here because um, I had that smoothed right down really good. So what I'm going to do is scribe that trunk line a little bit and um, I'm going to let this cure out good for another day and I'm going to wet sand it. What I'm going to do is just mask this off right here and here on that body line and I'm just going to hit that uh, real good in there and, and do it one more time so it should be okay after the next time uh, we'll go from there. So, I don't want to go too far on it because that's like I say the rest of the car is like it's good to go just that trunk I'll tell you what this trunk has been my um my enemy from the start uh the rest of the car has been painting really nice so like I said it's pretty much dried at this time it's secured out so yeah 
Yeah, that's the way it goes. That's okay. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. We'll get it. We'll get it fixed. Like I say, that was smooth. So when I painted that, see it pulled the paint up right there. It's got like a little wrinkle. So whatever I had in my hands, because I went like this, I was touching it, I was wiping it off. And it must have, like I say, I must have got something on it from myself. Um, and all that good stuff. So these things happen. But that's that's the fun of modeling. You know, let's, let's, let's troubleshoot it and figure it out. Let's get it fixed. Let's fix it. That's what we do. Okay, guys. All right, guys. So we're going to wrap this video up. Uh, like I say, it looks like we're going to do a little more work on that body work on the back. Not a big deal. Um, we'll get it cured out some more. And I think I'll just do that corner, just that back top piece. Easy fix. Easy fix. So, okay. We're going to wrap this up. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, everything you see I use today here, you can get down at Mark's website, down at Hobby to Models. He has all the stuff in stock. Um, Mark supplied the kit for this video. And like I say, we got the paints, everything come down from his, everything come from his store. So uh, if you guys want to do, you know, the same project, the same color, whatnot, or color of your choice, I like I say, head down to his website and he's got everything you need to put this kit together. Just like this or in a color of your liking. So once again, I appreciate you guys tuning into the channel and checking it out. And you guys have a good one and we will see you on video two. <laughs> you guys have a good one. We'll see ya.